We're back here today at this RTAA train. The vacuum was running overnight. We're down to 2400. And my oil is fairly dark. I've seen worse, but I'm gonna change oil out, get some fresh oil in there. It was actually down at about 1800 when I left, so what that tells me is I probably used up whatever capacity that oil had, and then once it maxed out, it, uh, you know, it just started climbing the microns from there. But we're holding microns. I've had it, the pump isolated for a couple, several minutes now, and we're not moving on the micron. So I'm confident on the leak. I just think we got a lot of refrigerant, moisture, and whatever else in the system. And now we need to get back out. So get new oil in it. I need to break for lunch. And let's see how it looks after lunch. Circuit 2, it keeps tripping on a uh, high pressure alarm we are in a low ambient uh, conditions right now and the fans are staging very uh, slowly and so what it makes me question is is the condenser saturation uh, temperature sensor working properly and so it's gonna be slower than actual pressure so the way this this chiller works is it, it reads condenser saturation uh, temperature as a live temperature which I can show you that here you can actually see it sticking out of the coil right there that is your condenser saturation sensor so it takes that sensor reading uh, and then it converts it into a pressure via PT chart built into the system it is slower to respond that way, but it should still function, right? You know, it, it, it does work. It's just, it, it's not as fast to respond to the condenser temp. But, um, you know, I want to verify, you know, is it reading correctly? You know, and I also want to verify our higher pressure switch to see, okay, when are we tripping? So... Right now I'm in the menu P2 on this control. I'm gonna cycle up. Need to go to P1. Uh, last menu item, reset circuit alarms, reset. All right, so zero two, it's gonna call, zero 70, it's getting ready to start. Go back up, we're gonna go back to P2. Cycle down to 24 on circuit two is flashing, which is our uh, saturation. So what I'm looking for is I want to see how our temperature reading compares to my pressures, my, my Testo probes saturation. So those two should line up and match is what I want to see. And what I'm seeing happen is the circuit starts and runs um, for several seconds, and then it'll trip out before the fans even turn on. So what that's indicating to me is that sensor's not registering temperature like it should, just a few degrees off. If it's reading a few degrees low, then we could be going into a high pressure situation and the chiller doesn't even know it until it trips the high pressure switch. Which means that we know we need to fix the sensor. Alright, here we go. So far that sensor doesn't look like it's too far out of calibration, just a, enough to be reasonable. I'm not too worried about that. I'm really wondering if maybe the configuration on the fan staging 
isn't set properly. So there is a configuration menu you can go into and get deeper into the, the programming and see how it was commissioned. So I may dive into that and see what that, what's up with that. Which I think it just cycled on to Yeah. So I'm gonna dive into that. Uh, I need to grab lunch right now. The circuit is online, it is keeping up. It's just kind of randomly happening right now. So I also need to go through and verify all the uh, wire terminations to make sure they're all good too. Anyway, it's another day. Vacuum's going, we've got one pump on right now. Uh, we're stalled out at around 2,000 microns. This circuit, having the two compressors, has a, has a lot of oil. Uh, if I've, you know, it passed the pressure test we did last, it, it passed the last leak surge. I've had this happen before, you know, so right now on, with one Tez A, two lines, full port, you know, we're at right at 24 hours, we're just over 24 hours vacuum right now. Yeah, you know, I've had them take you know, a few days before. Uh, whenever I isolate and do a standing vacuum test, it, it doesn't climb uh, like it has a leak. You know, normally you do that, you isolate it. Within five, 10 minutes, if there's an actual leak in the system, that a one big enough to prevent you from pulling a vacuum to begin with, you're gonna see it take off, right? We're not having that, so. What I'm really thinking is, it's just trying to pull the oil down. And like I said, you've got these huge oil reservoirs um, for both circuits. You know, it'd be one thing if you had to pull just one, one of those down, but you know, we gotta pull both of them. And that smaller circuit, which is half, less than half of the size of these two together, is uh, uh, you know it took a ride at, actually let's see let me think it took a little over 24 hours I believe to fully pull a ride at 24 hours just for that one so my my experience tells me and my gut halfway tells me to trust the vacuum trust the work I've done don't break it let it continue to do its job I am going to set up a second pump. Uh, you know, I, am, I, I get nervous in this situation because of leaks, but I, I got to trust my, my instincts on this and, and what I've seen in the past. So uh, I'm, I'm going to trust my experience. I'm going to get a second pump going. It's probably going to have to run overnight. But, you know, at least we're not killing time trying to break a vacuum looking for a leak that's not there when we could have used that time pulling the vacuum and saving resources.